Alright, Foxy. Hold my non-alcoholic beverage for a minute. Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to another Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted news update video. Scott has released a post over on Reddit, or Threadit, whatever you want to call it. Is there a specific thing? I know, I think the subreddit for FNAF is called Threadit, whatever. He made a post over on Reddit um, explaining the situation of the previous teaser talked about in my latest video. And he just sums things up. He actually adds in a few more things about the game, uh, what you do in it, and it's actually pretty, pretty cool. So we're going to take a look at that, and then we are actually going to take a, a closer look at the secret teasers from last episode, which I did show, but I didn't really analyze them a whole heck of a lot, but there is a lot to show. So first, let's check out his post. So this is probably one of the longest pieces of writing Scott has ever done. It is so long. Let me, uh, let me just show you. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, you right. So, <laughs> grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and let me read this to you. Update on VR situation. Hey everyone, I wanted to give an update on the VR game situation, as hinted by the title, I guess. As you all remember, the artwork that I teased for the game, which was actually a portion of the cover artwork, included characters that have that had used fan art and fan models as references. Oh god. When I learned about that, I was obviously pretty upset <clears throat> and took down the teaser. I've been speaking with the team over at Steel Wool, the VR company working on the game, for the last days, walking through this and figuring out from them what happened. Based on what I've heard, I do believe that this was an isolated incident and that it wasn't done with bad intentions. The person working on the artwork used images that he thought were mine. If anything, people who had one of their models referenced should be should pat themselves on the back because your models looked like they were canon. I think it's a testament to the fan community that the fan models rival me. Many of them look identical, and some of them look even better. The models in the actual game are my own though, or modified versions of my own models. The cover artwork was done using artwork available online because the models in-game weren't finished being textured. It doesn't excuse it, it's just what happened. They have since gone back and recreated the cover art using the actual in-game models. So that's pretty interesting, they actually redid the art using models from the game. I wholeheartedly believe that it wasn't anyone's intent to steal or copy any else's work. Trust me when I say that the people over at Steel Wool have been working their butts off on this game, trying to make it something incredible and something that will be exciting, be an exciting addition to the series. I've been constantly impressed with the work they've done. There are sections where you repair Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, and those sections are terrifying. You are instructed to reach inside of their chest cavities, or pull their faces off, or pull their eyeball eyeballs out. It's really unnerving. There is another section where you are in a dark in the dark with Funtime Foxy. It's basically a recreation of the game from Sister Location. Uh, I believe that was on night three. Yeah, that was night three. Um, I know that some people have said that that particular game was a bit lazy on my part considering that the screen is black 99% of the time. But let me tell you something, it's a whole different situation in VR. I played the Foxy, the Funtime Foxy section in an early build that wasn't impressive, but wasn't impressive. It was unfinished and Foxy was MIA. So I complained about it. They basically said, Hold my non-alcoholic beverage. And they spent the next three days off the grid. They sent me a new build, and again I entered the darkness with Funtime Foxy. I flashed my beacon again and again, and crept forward. I won't go into detail here, but I will say this. I have never screamed like I screamed that day. I screamed like a kid, falling off a roller coaster. I threw the VR set off my head, and it was ref reflexive. I totally nailed that one. Like when you jerk your hand off of a hot stove. It was an instinctive nope. I told Steel Wool that I would never test that section again, 
My son, Brandon, also an eager player of the VR game over here, has also th said that he'll never play that section again. So it sounds like the Funtime Foxy section is going to be unbelievably terrifying. The point of all this is... The point of all of this is just to ensure you guys that the team over at Steelwall has been working with one goal in mind, to make something that the community will recognize, enjoy, and get scared by. This was still a bad mistake, and they offered to post an apology. I told them I was handling it. But just be aware that they offered. They want to do right by all of you, by silencing your phone while you're recording. Oh yeah. And when you're hiding in the closet and baby is lurking outside the door, that's really scary. I also refuse to play the FNAF 4 bedroom with Fredbear outside. You should see Springtrap walk. The little monstrous plush babies are the best ad original addition to any game ever. Thanks again for the support, everyone. This is a great community. I'm going to try to be very vigilant and make sure something like this doesn't happen again. So I know I haven't shown them yet, which I probably should have done before this, but mm, whatever. Why would I do something that would make it easier for you guys to understand this? Pfft. You think you think I'm really that smart? Well, the answer is no. I'm, I'm, I'm not. <sighs> God dang it. Anyway, so it turns out that the secret images found within the original main teaser of all like the characters blended to get not blended together, <laughs> fusing together, molding. I don't know. The main one that was up on scottgames.com for like 10 minutes and then he took it down. So images were found hidden within that that was showcased in the last video and further on in this video. We'll get to them in a quick moment. Apparently, we're going to actually be, instead of those being cutscenes, they're actually going to be playable parts in the game. Where, hold on, let me just see right here. Yeah. So it looks like the ones that we know are playable so far are there's a Funtime Foxy minigame. There is a uh, when Baby's looking outside the closet in the FNAF 4 closet. There was a FNAF 4 bedroom minigame. Or maybe not minigame. I, maybe these are like main parts. I don't know. Because right now it seems like the game has two parts. One being the actual main objective of repairing the robots, and then the other ones being like some sort of memory flashback, playable memory flashback, where apparently Jeremy apparently, because we'll okay, it says remember Jeremy in the images. We'll get to that later. <laughs> I really should have done those first. Whatever, where Jeremy. It's going to have flashbacks of all the different locations, and those are going to be playable with Funtime Foxy, uh, FNAF 4 with Baby and Fredbear, apparently. FNAF 3 with Springtrap, and apparently Springtrap walks by. And now there's new characters called Plush Babies, but people apparently are now calling them, like, Babels, because they're kind of like, uh, Freddles, Babels. I don't like that name. <laughs> I think plush babies will be fine. So yeah, those are going to be playable, which is going to be very, very interesting to see how they actually separate those from the main game of repairing the robots. I'm really, I'm really fascinated about this game. I'm really excited to see um, what it holds and all the secrets hidden within it. All right, so now we're going to start to take a closer look at the secret images. But first off, we're going to start and we... Alright, so now we're going to look into the secret images hidden in this very teaser. But first, there's actually something we need to address with this teaser, and something that I neglected to mention in the previous episode, simply because we didn't know about it, because it happened shortly after I actually uploaded the video. So, this was the video posted on scottgames.com, where it showcases all of the animatronics that you would assume would be there. Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, all three of them from FNAF 1. Funtime Foxy from... Whoa, something just fell downstairs. Funtime Foxy from this location. And then this is actually Spring Bonnie. But what we didn't know, but that we do now, is that this model of Spring Bonnie is unofficial. It was made by a fan. 
and as we saw in Scott's update video about the VR, um, the VR situation, this and the Funtime Foxy model aren't official. The one we're going to be focusing on right now is the Spring Bonnie one, and here is, <laughs> I don't know why I laughed, it just looks, it looks weird seeing it all golden unlike the others, but this is the model. If you look side by side, you can see it is the exact same thing and this was actually taken from oh god what's it called shoot i forget what it's called something memories oh pop goes memories created by uh shoot what's his name oh shoot it's not yeah kane carter that's what i thought so yeah this is unofficial same thing with that one uh the funtime fox model so that's why this the, that's why this image was taken down now hidden within the source code of scottgames.com you can actually find secret messages they there were four of, there were four secret messages total one read don't listen to them unclear who the them is we let something inside unclear of who the we is and unclear of what was let inside it was an accident also unclear it may be referring to one of the bites but it may be a whole new accident, or it could be the mur the original murders of the five kids. And finally, remember Jeremy. Jeremy being the main and uh, a the main protagonist in FNAF 2. So those are the secret messages you can find on here. And then also you can kind of see them on the main teaser, but they're really hard to make out. So after the events of finding those and figuring out that some of the models in the teaser were actually fan-made and unofficial, Scott released this message over on his Reddit account, saying, Hey everyone, I was really looking forward to teasing something new for you today. I've been working on so many things over the last six months, but I can always count on you guys to call foul when you see a foul, and I appreciate that. I can't tell you all how many times I've put a halt to a toy or a poster because Reddit informed me that it was using a fan model, so I hope you can all imagine my devastation to learn that my first teaser in more than half a year was made using questionable choices at best, and traced fan models at worst. I've taken the image down, and now am, I'm going to be thinking about where to go from here. The only thing I care about is doing right for this community. So you can clearly tell from this message that Scott was absolutely heartbreaking. He, he was absolutely heartbroken. Hmm? Yeah, good, good enough to figure out that the models were unofficial and that in more than half a year from posting a teaser, it was his teaser had questionable content. That sounds like it was inappropriate. It wasn't. It was just bad choices. So, it's not Scott's fault, it's not anyone at uh, Steel Wool's, Steel Wool, the industry making the VR game, it's not their fault, it was an accident, everyone makes accidents, everyone has their oopsies every now and then, and yeah, so, it, it sucks, it does, but there's nothing we can do, it's in the past, so now, we can just look forward and you can tell that Scott is looking out for the community and wants the best for the community because he's a very great guy and he respects the community a whole lot and that's always welcome it's always amazing to see scott's appreciation for the community um even when he doesn't directly say i'm so proud of this community in the meme -y way it is you know he's just a great guy all around and it, it really sucks to see him heartbroken. And now we're going to actually be looking at the images that you can find, the secret ones, hidden in the source code for scottgames.com. The first one is a picture of Bonnie missing his eye. Now, originally we thought that, or at least I thought, I said this in my video, that we would have to go find an eye for Bonnie and maybe replace it. And I was on the right track, and we now know from Scott's latest post on Reddit that we do end up taking the eyeballs out of Bonnie, which is a pretty neat touch. We can see a little bit of his endoskeleton head, and we're actually going to see how these animatronics operate from the inside, which is going to be very, very cool to see. It's... I don't know why. 
I'm just so fascinated by how these characters work, even though they're not real. Scott actually put in the effort to make, you know, walking endoskeleton electronic parts, I guess, for these characters. And I'm going to be so, so excited to see how we get to, like, take them apart and put them back together. Um, that I just realized that was kind of a joke on Fredbear's voice line in Ultimate Custom Night. But whatever, I'm just so fascinated by this. Next teaser is Chica in what looks to be a kitchen, and there's smoke behind her. It's really unclear about what we're do what we're gonna be doing in this um, scene, I guess, this part of the game. But what is gonna be super cool is actually being able to see a kitchen. This probably isn't the FNAF one area, but who knows? Maybe it is, and maybe the fact that. We, th this is my guess, we're going to be going from location to location repairing the robots because we know that FNAF 1 is, FNAF 1 and 2 are the only restaurants besides Fredbear's, but why would FNAF 1 Chica be in Fredbear's? It doesn't make any sense. So I'm guessing that we're going to be in FNAF 1, the FNAF 1 location, taking care of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Maybe we see Golden Freddy, maybe we don't. And then we head over to maybe the FNAF 2 location. We haven't heard anything about the toy or withered animatronics yet, so I'm not sure. And then we head over to the FNAF 3 location where we encounter Springtrap. And then when we're done with him, we go to the Sis location. Uh, no. Yeah. The Sis location location. <laughs> and the FNAF 4 location, which are connected. So that would probably be a maybe just one part in itself rather than going from FNAF 4 to FNAF 6 location. I think it'll just be one combining the two because the FNAF 4 house is above the, um, what you call it, the Sis location area. So we're going to do that. We're going to see Baby from the closet. We're going to see uh, Funtime Foxy creeping down his room. And then once we're done with that, we may or may not go to the FNAF 6 location, and we are definitely, definitely not going to go to the Custom Night location, because that isn't a real location. It's just William Afton's purgatory, or his hell, or wherever he goes after he burns in FNAF 6. So, that's my guess. So, I'm I'm really excited to see the FNAF 1 kitchen. Nearly, nearly five years, like four and a half years, and we still haven't seen what it looks like. So that's going to be very interesting to see. Now here is the teaser where we are actually inside of the FNAF 4 closet. You can tell because you can see the bed right here, right right behind Baby. You can see the, uh, the pattern of the blanket that we can see in FNAF 4, and Baby is actually looking in. There's the lamp as well, so that also proves that we are actually in the closet. Maybe we're hiding from Baby, and she's trying to look for us, but it's kind of unclear about what's happening, but I have already talked about this, where Baby's probably going to come up from the Sith location place, and Fredbear's going to be there as well, mentioned in Scott's recent post, and also um, Funtime Foxy. I think maybe we'll start in the FNAF 4 house, and then we'll make our way down to the Sith location area, with all the um, like control modules and all that, or maybe we start there and we have to make our way out. And when we're going out, we actually end up going to the FNAF 4 house because, like we said, the FNAF 4 house is above. Oh, I just realized my mouse is in the way. The FNAF 4 house is above the Sis location. Location. It's canon. It's confirmed. It's right there in the FNAF uh, Sis location. I think it might be night two breaker room area section and the FNAF 4 house is shown on the map of this location so it's really not that you know not that hard to understand next up are the plush babies or the ba babels if you want to call them i'm just going to call them plush babies because that's what they are apparently these are like frittles and they come after you it's not really clear where they are setting wise but we do know that they are going to be in the game, 
and they are most likely going to be attacking us and commanded by baby to harm us in some way. Maybe they're hunting us down. Maybe that's an easy way for baby to know where we are if we are trying to hide, but it's really unclear what their purpose is as of now. The second to last teaser actually shows Springtrap in the FNAF 3 area. You can very clearly tell it's FNAF 3 due to the control panel, the Freddy outfit, the toy bin, that's a big giveaway, and just the de decayness and just overall, you know, structure of the building and the office. You can, it's obviously FNAF 3. Something interesting is that there's actually a vending machine in the office. Usually those aren't in horror attractions, and they're not usually in offices, but okay, sure. Uh, actually, vending machines sometimes aren't in offices. I take that back. Springtrap, it looks like his model has been redone a bit to better fit the theme and overall, like, um, aura of this new VR game. And like I said, I have a feeling we're going to go to the FNAF 3 location, we're going to search for Sp Springtrap, maybe we do some repairs on him, but it seems unlikely because he's not an actual robot, he's kind of just there. He is used for the horror attraction, but who knows, maybe we do repairs on him, but it may be a bit difficult with all that flesh and decaying body inside of him in the way. And finally, the last teaser shows FNAF 1 Freddy's chest cavity actually opened and exposing his endoskeleton, where you can see it does look a bit different from the ones we actually saw in the original FNAF 1, but my guess is they just got a slight change because they were maybe a bit bland, they didn't have that much, but they had to be upgraded to actually be able to perform maintenance on, mate, maintenance, mate, to perform repairs on in this new game. So that looks absolutely incredible. I am still a bit confused about how the bow tie doesn't get in the way of Freddy's chest opening, but I won't argue with that. Apparently it just happens. And it's going to be cool to see us doing repairs actually inside Freddy's chest cavity. So this is probably one of the most interesting um, secret teasers. Actually, I take that back. I think this is the most interesting teaser, or secret teaser, because this isn't for, this isn't a teaser for the VR game, this is actually a teaser for the movie. Now, it may be a bit unclear to see it, but if you picture this, picture Freddy, alright, let's go back to here, Freddy, his big head, take that off, what do you have? An endoskeleton head. Now look at this picture, you see the outline of it? The jaw and the mouth right here, the two eyes right here, I1, I2, and the wires coming all the way down. This is an endoskeleton head from the FNAF movie. This is a teaser for the movie coming out in a few years. You can tell this is for, this is not for the game, the VR game, it's not for Into Madness, it's not for the AAA game, because it's in this vertical image format. It's not like the other images. I know <laughs> this isn't fitting the screen, I don't believe. It's not like this, where it's a screenshot from a from a computer. It's a screenshot from a phone. And we know it's a phone because the properties for this for the image, this image, uh camera model, iPhone GS Plus, which um it's actually a pretty old phone. I, I'm pretty sure that's a really old phone. Scott, come on, man. You're like a millionaire. Why are you still using a GS Plus? Maybe that, is that 6S? Oh, that is a 6S. I thought that was a GS. Um, Yeah, this is a teaser for the movie, which is absolutely incredible. This shows that the script is done, and they're now actually working on sets and actors and all that stuff. So that is unbelievably great news. So that was a closer look at the main teaser and secret teasers from scottgames.com for a few days ago. It was only up for a few minutes because like I said, they took it down because of fan-made models, but now it looks like they've gone back on track and the game is coming along really, really well. 
should be out in the next few months, hopefully, maybe, March, April, May, ooh, May's Golden Freddy, I have, I'll try to find links for these images and put them in the, in the description, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to, I'll try, I'll definitely put like the posts in the description, and the website and reddit and all that stuff but i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to put links for images i'll try i'll definitely try but that's it um hopefully we should be getting a new teaser sometime soon if scott decides to upload the new artwork for the game because they did remake it i'm not sure if he's going to change it but if he doesn't we still have some more news sneak peek because tomorrow I will be doing another video talking about the updated edition of... Oh, it's not... <laughs> I should have guessed. My shelf is empty. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this updated version of the Freddy Files. The new book, the updated version, version 2, will have Pizza Sim Custom Night maybe VR stuff, and maybe AAA Into Madness movie, maybe, and it'll also have Fourth Closet, and maybe it'll even have the Freddy Files in it, that'd be weird, Freddy Fileception, <laughs> anyways, thank you everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side.